In today's Comstar TV episode, we're going to hear a few fantastic projects from Cisco. First, we're going to head to Oslo to meet Marte Carlson, who's going to talk to us about digital marketing, as well as something called Black Belt. We're going to get a few sales tips from our coach, Max. And we're going to go to Copenhagen to meet Marius Nackling, our security expert, to talk about an integrated portfolio. Welcome. Welcome to the Comstar TV show, everyone. My name is Alex Jackson, and I'm going to be your host for today. On this show, we're going to meet some amazing people from the IT world. We're also going to hear some stories from both our partners as well as Cisco, find out some new information, as well as answer a few questions. We're going to open today's show with Matthias Nackling in Copenhagen. He's our security expert to talk about an integrated portfolio. Matthias, over to you. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's warming up in Sweden, but there are too many vendors for me to choose from. Yeah, let's talk about security vendors. Are you correct? There are a lot of security vendors out there to choose from, and many of them are really good at what they do. But we need to remember that chaining together a custom solution with a mix of best of breed products means that we increase the complexity of our security solution. So to handle the type of cyber threats that organizations and companies are facing today, which are more complex and persistent than ever, we need to not only have the best of breed products, but we also need them to provide their findings in a meaningful way. And we need to correlate them with other security products. And you need this published at the same place, so it's easy to understand. The key factors in battling the bad guys today, it's time to detect, time to respond. The successful attack can be done in as low as 19 minutes. That means in only 19 minutes, you need to locate the attack, you need to understand what kind of type of attack it is, and you need to react accordingly to protect the network environment from a breach. So if you don't have the automation pieces in place at that spot where the decisions are made, then the chances are much more likely that the attack is going to, number one, be successful, and number two, have a much huger impact. Like, there can be... uh, the number of endpoint clients that will be affected by the ransomware or something like that. So instead of going for a mix of point products, you can choose an integrated security portfolio, which will shorten the time to detect and time to respond. An integrated security portfolio will provide remediation automation and visibility to an attack, and also provide retrospective capabilities so that you can understand what happened and go through it and clean up everything. After you. Cisco provides an integrated security portfolio covering network, endpoint, cloud, and applications. With all of this in place, you can get end-to-end security covering from the off-prem roaming user to the on-prem data center. And this is all backed up by the world's largest private internet research group, Cisco Talos. Uh, Cisco Talos consists of more than 350 full-time uh, members working for you all around the world, and they're working to continuously improve the Cisco security products. Uh, and Cisco recently released something called Secure X, uh, which will be available to everyone in June. This platform, which is free of charge, yeah, it's free if you have some of the Cisco security products. It provides a common place to publish all the findings from all the security products that customers have already invested in and it's a single dashboard for all the security products on the network so that you can reduce your complexity. You can stop the need of go, jumping around from GUI to GUI and get information about the events on the network faster. So with SecureX, you get the best of both worlds. You get an integrated security portfolio and the best of breed third-party vendors. Isn't that great? So when it comes to choosing security vendors, choose wisely, choose Cisco. All right. All the best. And uh, stay safe. Stay connected. Fantastic, Marius. Thank you. We're going to hear from Marius in the next episode as well as the next one.
But now we talk about something else. The situation with COVID has made us all work differently and more digitally. This includes virtual meetings as well as digital marketing. Someone who knows everything about this is Marte Carlson, Partner Marketing Manager at Oslo and Cisco. Over to Oslo and a reporter, Monica Saxenfeld Eriksson. Yes, I'm here in Oslo talking to Marte Carlson, uh, working for Cisco. Uh, as most of us, I'm sure, uh, we are all working from home these days and uh, yeah, special times. Uh, how is this working for Cisco and you uh, these days, Marta? Hi, Monica. Thanks for asking. I think in Cisco, we really do whatever we can to support our customers and partners. However, I think lately has been hard on everyone. And over the last months, you know, I've seen crying children, pets and spouses on video meetings. I've seen messy home offices and really experienced partners and customers dealing with stress as a result of everything going on. Yeah. Uh, so I think in times like this, my best advice would really be to cut each other some slack and show compassion. But I also realize that this new way of working gives most of us a lot more time on our hands. So I think it's also vital to use the time constructively to feel productive and valuable. Ah, oh, thanks for sharing, Marta. And I uh, definitely resonate to what you're saying about messy home offices and dogs mostly. Um, so based on everything you just uh, described, uh, what would you best advice be? Uh, getting through that lonely days at home. <laughs> uh, I think, nothing. Yeah, I think <laughs> in addition to, of course, taking care of yourself and your family, I think what we can do is to make sure that we keep relevant and that we keep up to speed. So, for example, Cisco has great... Uh, certification enablement programs available for all their partners. So maybe that could be something of interest. Oh, excellent. Uh, could you please go through those partner programs? Uh, so I'm sure our viewers would like to learn more. Sure. So let's start with what's available for marketing. So for all the great marketeers out there, we have something called marketing, marketing velocity learning. Marketing Velocity Learning is an e-learning platform where you can consume the content you, you want based on your preferred area of interest and your skill level. So I would say that this is really a good gateway for all marketers looking for insights on the latest trends and also really wanting to deep dive and specialize in digital marketing. Oh, so that applies for all our partners? Yes, it's free of charge and available for all our partners and distributors. Ah. That's excellent because we all know marketing is very important and so is sales and technical uh, too, of course. So for the sales and technical guys, what do you recommend for them? So I think what I would like to highlight is, is really the Black Belt training. Uh, mm -hmm. Black Belt is a specially designed framework to support and enable our partners to stay up to date on you know, the latest Cisco technology and solutions. It's all online, super easy to access from where you are, when you want. Ah, excellent. So what's in it for our partners, you would say? I guess the biggest benefit is that you will be rewarded with a Black Belt certificate and an and individually designated badge. Uh, what is also good about this type of training is that it also helps maintain your certifications, which I know is very important for our partners to showcase their experience expertise on Cisco technology to their customers. Not to mention, you will build great confidence in talking about Cisco solutions and telling the Cisco story. Wow, oh, that is very important. Confidence is everything, isn't it? So um, it sounds really amazing, Marta, and thank you so much. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity for our partners and myself, actually. Uh, and rumor has it that it is excellent. So. Um, yeah, confidence building and increasing sales can't be bad. I'm sure you have already deep dived into the uh, black belt portal. <laughs> so, uh, as you all know, Comstar will always help you when it comes to Cisco. And thank you, Marta and Cisco, for a great program. And thank you for your time. Thanks, Monica. We can see that you're a black belt master. We've asked a few people some questions, uh, and today's question, uh, questions for our experts. Today's question is from Victoria Bedegrin from the southern part of Sweden. Hi, what about firewall? 
What is it and where is it placed? Thank you for the question, Victoria. I know someone perfect to answer this question, and it's none other than Thomas Sweenen, conveniently one of our experts and trainers in this subject. Over to Houghton in the Netherlands. Hi, Tom. Over to you. This is a very important question. As you might have guessed, I'm working from home today, and the network that I'm connected to can be considered a safe place to be. But it's also a boring place if I won't be able to get outside. We won't be able to have this video call. I won't be able to connect to my colleagues later today. So I need to get to the wild, wide web, an unsafe place to be. To regulate the connection between these two worlds, we have, we need a regulator in the middle, which is traditionally called a firewall. And firewalls, traditionally, are all about opening ports and closing ports. Opening ports in terms of me going to websites and closing them from attackers willing to go inside, right? Now, a firewall can be more complex than that because if I'm going to my friends later today, I want to show off with pictures from last weekend, which are stored on a media system at home. So I need to open that port for me reading those files. Now, that is what a firewall has been doing since 25 years, and this is no longer considered a safe thing to do. Because if the laptop that I'm using from my friends has been infected by malware, this malware might use the same link into my office or into my home office and, of course, infect my systems back there. So I need to have context, not just opening a port from one place to another place, but understanding the connection between these two worlds that actually I allow to happen. So this is what we call a next generation firewall or a unified threat management gateway, understanding context between those two worlds. Now, how does that system understand this flow? It needs to be updated with signatures. A communication stream, a way of communicating can be seen with a certain signature, how it behaves itself. And this behavior pattern is stored in a global database, stored within Cisco's databases and has branded the name Talos. It's been updated with hundreds of full-time engineers constantly scanning the entire world on misbehaving communications. And your system will be updated instantly with those signatures. If something strange happens on the other side of the world, you will be protected before it gets there. So it's kind of safe. Talos, I have to tell you that Cisco has most of the firewalls, security uh, devices on the globe. So if something happens, your device will be the first to know. So no longer being trapped, being, um, being trapped by WannaCry, Notpedia, VPN filter, all these threats that usually a firewall doesn't know about are now being protected or now being blocked. So I hope I clarified this question for you and you know what a firewall or a next generation firewall is and where it sits in the network. Who doesn't love a sunshine story? I know I do, and we have one coming up where I went to the Cisco offices in Stockholm to speak with Marie Dyer to talk about her project lending out Cisco's DX80s to elderly homes. I think the idea arose from a discussion I had with some of my friends when it was right in the beginning of, uh, I don't know, the corona pandemic, but it wasn't really called a pandemic at that period of time. But we, we thought about kind of the consequences that this could have long term. And then we discussed it primarily from people that are old, uh, a little bit older than even like my mom and dad. And uh, that's when I started thinking, OK, so this might be something that's going to go on for quite a long time for them. Uh, so how can we make it? easier. And then I realized that if we don't have to come into the office anymore, uh, we have all these video conferencing systems that stand all over our offices and we're not going to use them. So can we use them for something else instead? And I thought this could be a good use for them. So then how did you start to go about this process of contacting different retirement homes or different elder folk um, homes? Well, first I started out asking around a few of my other friends and see, like, do you think that you would use this if you like, would like to speak to your grandparents or to somebody that you know that, that is in a risk zone? Would you use this instead of kind of seeing them face to face? And after some discussions around that, I contacted my manager and I asked, do you think that it's possible for us to do this with these systems that we have? And uh, everyone seems to think it was a good idea. 
So we uh, went ahead and we checked with some legal issues and then we started contacting some of the elderly homes and see if they were interested. And what was the response from the elderly folk and in their homes and networks? We did a try with the two elderly homes first. So I went into the office with a colleague of mine and we kind of tried the systems out so that it, it worked the way that we wanted them to. And we um, configured them so that they would work at the elderly home as well. So we, we cleaned them up and then we took them and we left them outside and then we talked to them over the phone and explained uh, how you put it on and how you use it and everything. And then they were able to kind of try themselves and see how it worked and they were able to call a system that I have at my house and we called them from our laptops and they kind of got used to working with it a little bit. Um, and after they, uh, these two elderly homes kind of got used to working with them, we understood, okay, so this is something that we can use with other elderly homes. And at that point, there was a lot of elderly homes that had kind of contacted people that work here um, because they had discussed it kind of with their friends and they had heard from other people that were trying to do this. And then there were lots of elderly homes that were interested in trying it. Um, and we also kind of got in contact with one of our technical partners who has a good relationship with one of the biggest um, private, privately owned elderly home chains, <laughs> I think is the word for it. Uh, and they were also very interested in trying it. So that's why we kind of were able to deliver so many systems in such a short period of time. It seems to be an overwhelmingly positive response that you get from, uh, from all it, parties involved. I, I think it was, it was an overwhelmingly positive, like all of them were positive around the idea of having this as a tool mm -hmm. uh, in their elderly home. But I think it was like implementing it has been different from place to place because a lot of the places they don't have anyone specifically working with the IT. I mean, the people that work there are caretakers. Mm -hmm. And they have very varied experience in working with well, all different technical stuff. I mean, maybe they don't even have a smartphone or something like that. And when we tried to like, kind of like get them to, to use them, it was a bit varied. Um, now we've gone so far, so all, I think all of them are, are up and running and they're using them. Do you think that people will still use the video conferencing system after the pandemic is over? Um, I think more than they have been now. I'm pretty confident that... All of them won't, um, because I think it's now it's been kind of a, still kind of in a short period of time. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, at least from the response that we've gotten, that they all of the, the elderly homes that we've kind of worked with have seen the value in, in having this as an extra tool. It's easier to get in contact with the people that you love. And you don't really have to get on that train or you don't have to get on that car. Or you don't have to get on that plane because some people have relatives who live quite far away. Um, so in that sense, I think, yes, they will use it as a tool. I, I hope that they will use it as a complementary tool. And I also think that they realized how you can use this like in your business, talking to each other as well. Uh, so it's not only for the, the people that actually live in the home and to, to talk to their relatives, but also a good way to kind of gather the entire staff. Uh, it's actually quite fun if I can tell a little bit of a story. Please which made me really happy as well. Uh, it's, uh, I think it was two weeks ago, uh, we had the first uh, kind of birthday party with uh, one, of this, um, one of these video conferencing systems. So it was uh, a woman called Mai who turned 100. And she had uh, some of her relatives kind of call in on this video system. And then she had a little cake and then they had like kind of decorated the, like the room in a very specific way like with balloons and pink stuff. And it was, it was very nice to see that, that it was, uh, I don't know, they're kind of using it to its full potential. Mm -hmm. uh, and in this sense, I know that Mai had relatives who also lived in Spain mm -hmm. and they probably wouldn't have come here even though like, they were able to travel. Mm -hmm. But in this way, they could have like, been in the, in the room like they were physically in the room. It's a really nice story. So I think, I think yes, <laughs> as a compliment to meeting physically. I hope so. Great. What an amazing story. And it was a pleasure to meet you, Marie. Within IT, we use a lot of acronyms, whether it's SMB, PTO, MSLA, or even LCA. One Cisco product is called DevNet, but that's actually also an acronym. We're going to go to Copenhagen, back to Matthias Nackling, to talk about this. Matthias, can you explain what DevNet is? Yeah, I'll be happy to answer that for you. Uh, the Cisco DevNet is the Cisco Developer Network. It's a place where you can go to get uh, all the tools and education that you need to start creating cool things on top of the Cisco platforms. So whether you're doing collaboration, security, data center, or enterprise networks, 
you will get all the tools that you need to get started with automation and programmability today. As we all know, doing automation means that you get all the boring manual stuff away and it gives you some extra time that you can use for more important stuff. I don't know, such as... Thanks, Matthias. Uh, more automation to the people. You can't miss our next interesting session. Working from home is not always a sunshine story like we heard about from Marie. We're going to go to Max Soderpalm, our sales coach, who's going to talk to us about what working from home can be like. Over to London. Go ahead, Max. Hi there. My name is Max Soderpalm. I am a sales coach and an author of 12 books on sales and success. I am sending my regard from a London lockdown. And today I want to give you three tips when you sell from home. Because this spring, suddenly lots of salespeople started working from home. Instead of having the group of sales buddies or the customers around them as before. It is a big change if you're not used to it. When this happens to many at once and in a situation where many are worried, it's important to get things done. Therefore, I decided to get you specific advice on how you can set up your job to make the best of the situation. When the whole market is up and down, it may feel even stranger. Does anyone answer my calls? How do I manage to talk to people who are worried? How can I... I find the motivation to take advantage of my work when everything is absolutely crazy and everyone just talks about crisis. To help you think and do the right thing, here are three tips to help you have a good time when you sell from home. First, aim to always be proud of yourself when you finish your day's work. Before you start your workday, write down what you want to do. Whatever you said as your goal, it gives you the chance to feel that you have done something good. And remember, it's important to keep the motivation up for a long time and take care of every day. Two. Get yourself routines that make you treat the day like a regular work day. Get up when you usually get up. Prepare for the day as usual. Put on similar clothes you would have had if you went to work. Just because your job is at your home doesn't mean that you should sit in your pyjama all day long. Your subconscious will help you get into the go-to-work feeling if you do these things. 3. Avoid completely the TV news or surfing on news sites during working hours. Right now the world is more or less paralyzed and completely in the hands of media. That's for your competition. Let them depress themselves. It's their choice. So be careful. Wouldn't it be better to do the opposite so you can be proud and resist? Remember, you will become a worse seller if you consume bad news when you instead should share up your customers. So please be smart and resist. And now follow these advice and have fun when you sell from home. See you next time. Bye. Thank you, Max. I will make sure to change out of my pajamas next time as well. We're going to wrap up this show today with someone very special to us. Anna Aslin is Distribution Manager, Account Manager at Cisco Sweden. Over to you, Anna. Thanks. Because of the current situation, I can't be with you in the TV studio today. Many of you know me as Asta, and I'm honored to wrap this first edition of the Comstore TV show up. It's such a weird time. At least, finally, summer is here, but many of us are struggling in so many different ways with working from home all the time. But many of our coming customers are struggling even more 
not prepared to have their whole workforce working from home in a secured way. Cisco is counting on all of you to help them. I am proud to work within the IT industry because we can help and we do make a difference. Do you have ideas on how you could help your local community? Please reach out to Comstore because maybe we can do it together. I'm also proud of being part of the Comstore extended team and I miss meeting you guys. And I'm longing for the day that we can all meet again and I hope it will be soon. Take care. Back to the studio. Bye. Thank you, Asta. We miss you too and can't wait to see you again. Time flies when you're having fun, but unfortunately, it's time to end today's show. If you're interested to see this episode again, you can find it on our website, on our YouTube channel, and also on our social media. Stay safe, stay connected, and stay secure. See you next week. Goodbye.